What's up everybody, it's John over at Shore Cycles. Today we are gonna give you an overview, pros and cons, and some history on the new 2022 Honda Navi here in the United States. So the Navi actually originally came out in 2016 in India, and it was under the Honda Activa platform. So sold really well in India for the first couple of years, kind of tapered off and uh, didn't sell so well after a couple of years, but here it is in the US making a reappearance. I think Honda's gonna see what this thing can do. The Grom has become increasingly more popular here in the States, just the same way that the Ruckus did 10 or 15 years ago. So here's another small mini moto platform. So pretty exciting to see Honda bring this in, especially at the price point. And a little quirk in India, the base model didn't come with the really cool storage compartments. There was actually a big opening there, at least the base model didn't. So uh, that's standard here in the US, it's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, pretty neat little unit. It's a 109cc air-cooled single cylinder four-stroke in a very similar engine style as many of Honda's other vehicles over the years. It's that horizontal cylinder, two valve, overhead cam. You've seen this thing in other vehicles for years. Here it is, just a little redesigned, repurposed. It is a CVT, like their scooters. So that means it's fully automatic. There's a variator in there and a clutch and a belt. So there's no shifting, there's no gears. It's continuously variable and you just twist the throttle and go. It is carbureted. So there is a little carburetor in there, but for an MSRP of 1807 here in 2022, you know, plus your freight and prep and stuff, it's pretty crazy how cheap this thing is considering a Grom is, I believe around 37, 3,800 with freight these days in 2022. So this thing is almost half as much. Um, small wheels, they're compact. So we have a 12 inch in the front and a 10 inch in the rear is what you'd expect. Uh, no gripes about the tire size or the tire quality. The rubber on these things is actually pretty good. It looks like you could commute on these and they're gonna slip rain pretty well. Uh, the wheels are pretty dinky. They're pretty cheap looking. Um, definitely one of the places where Honda saves some money here. Uh, I'm sure the aftermarket and the, the modifiers are gonna come out with a bunch of cool wheels for this thing. So most people are probably gonna swap them anyway, but they're gonna get the job done if you're just commuting and stuff. And then um, another pretty basic item on this spike that isn't crazy impressive, but gets the job done is a suspension. Not a ton of travel there. You can see these forks are tiny, but again, basic commuter, stuff like that. And I just can't wait to see what the aftermarket does with this bike, the same that they did for the Ruckus and the Grom. You have a seat height of 30 inches. This one's on the center stand. It feels lower than that because the seat really slims out here and the foot peg position is really great, but the seat is really slim. It doesn't feel as tall as 30 inches. Uh, it's got a 0.9 gallon fuel tank. Honda's claiming 110 miles a gallon on this thing. So you're gonna probably get close to 100 miles out of a tank on this thing. If you're riding wide open, probably more like 80. And then the weight of this vehicle is 236 pounds. That's including all equipment required, fluids, etc. cetera. Uh, again, it, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like 150 pounds. Uh, you can literally almost lift the front end up when you ride the thing. Uh, 2022, we have red, grasshopper green, nut brown, and ranger green. You're gonna, of course, get a one-year Honda factory warranty on this thing if it's brand new. This one's actually used, and it's got 86 miles on it. It's just basically like new. And it's got some of the design cues like the like the Grom headlight design, kind of squared off, edgy. You can see where Honda's saved some money here, where this looks like a rear reflector license plate bracket. Not sure if it is from another model, but it's up front here and it just looks like that style of metal. Um, does uh, accept a passenger. And so you do have foot pegs that can fold out for the passenger. There's a grab bar that's really nice right there for them. The seat's surprisingly roomy. It feels roomy. Um, I think, you you know, for short rides, you could get around with two people. Um, now, who is this bike for? So if you have to do highway speed, 55 mile an hour roads, 65 mile an hour freeways, this is not the vehicle. Um, I'm about 170 pounds and I could sustain 50 on this thing on flat ground at sea level. So 
you have secondary roads, in-town roads, city roads, posted speed limit, 40, 45, 50. This thing will be fine, but that's pretty much the top limit of its stock speed and ability. But if you live in a city or a small town, a beach town near where we're at, it's absolutely perfect for that kind of ride. It's gonna give you the power and speed, being able to go 40 and 50, like a 50cc scooter might not be able to get as easily. Um, so you'll be able to get out of your own way and get up to speed. I always tell people on small displacement vehicles, it's not so much about the top speed, it's really about that zero to 30 because you wanna be able to get off the line and keep up with traffic right from the get-go. And you don't wanna hold anybody up at a stoplight or a traffic light. So other pros I like about this thing, it feels more roomy than it looks. The handlebars actually sit pretty tall and I'm about six foot and I don't feel scrunched or tight on this thing at all like I will on some scooters. It's really, it feels like a bigger bike. It's pretty crazy. Um, I like the foot position. They're a little bit more forward, so it makes you feel kind of stretched out. Your feet aren't directly underneath of you. They're a little bit in front of you, which makes you feel like kind of relaxed and it makes you sit back nice. Um, the storage compartment is probably the coolest thing on this bike. It's lockable, you access it from the side right here. So the same ignition key goes in. You have this huge storage compartment. I mean, it's about a foot in depth. I mean, you could easily get some takeout food in there, your couple little grocery items, and it seals up nice. You can see the seal like an air box on there, and then it locks in place like that. And then you have a, a fuel valve right there, like a standard petcock. Um, it does have a side stand and a center stand. Um, center stand's probably better to use on this bike because it won't start with a kickstand down as a safety item um but yeah it does have the center stand which is great i like the the tail setup how you have the fender here um you could probably do some fender eliminator stuff with the, the tail here i'm sure someone's going to come out with an integrated tail light with the turn signals and stuff built in but you can kind of clean this up a little bit but it, it doesn't look too bad from stock and you see the same basic wheel in the back um kind of a, a downside again is the brakes are pretty basic they're a drum brake and they're not that great uh they'll stop you you know from 50 but it's not gonna stop you very quickly like a disc brake will so you know i wonder if that, that's going to be something that's upgradable if someone does a, a disc setup at least for the front uh would be pretty cool but for now it's drum it gets the job done but the brakes aren't going to wow you uh, as far as the speed and power curve it gets off the line pretty good so for like zero to ten zero to twenty it's great. It'll get you up to 30, no problem. You feel that little bit of that lull from 30 to 35, 30 to 38 in the CVT. Um, and then it kind of keeps going. And once it hits 40, it just keeps on trucking for me. And it climbs right to 50. And I was able to sustain 50 without any issue. Another pro, I do like that it has a, a actual fuel gauge, not just a fuel light. And it has the petcock too, so you shouldn't have any problem not knowing what your fuel is. I like that they use the same switches as some of their more expensive vehicles. I mean, this is, I'm pretty sure the same starting switch assembly as like a Honda CBR 1000. It has the same feel, doesn't feel cheap. Plastic quality is great. And then you see the same over here on the left. They feel the same as their 10, $15,000 bikes. Um, so I always like that, you know, it's an easy place to cheap out on. And the switches, Honda switches to me always feel pretty good. And these look great as well. You have a choke here for the carburetor. If it's cold, you can um, use that to fire it up. And that's pretty much the summary. I like that it has a kind of, not really a skid plate, but yeah, it's got a little plastic guard there for bumps and bruises. This is also like the perfect pit bike, but I think this thing is gonna be fitting right in with the Groms and all that. And the mini moto thing is really becoming popular. And I think this is a great example from Honda with Again, MSRP 1807 here in 2022 with freight at these days, I think it's like 2100, you know, plus dealer fees, but geez, you know, 2022, $2,100 for a new Honda. I mean, that's unheard of. Even a Ruckus, I think is almost three grand with, with freight these days. So I think it's pretty incredible value. I like Honda bringing in some stuff at this price point. I'm excited to see this thing in the US. I hope it succeeds and I hope they continue to bring more stuff like this in the US, especially at the price point. It's really exciting. So if you have any questions about this thing, drop it in the comments. We're a pre-owned dealer in Maryland. So we see all sorts of stuff 
and we work on just about everything. So if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. If you have any questions or if you know something that we didn't cover, please let us know down below. But I appreciate you watching the 2022 Honda Navi video. We'll see you in the next one.